Hello everyone and welcome to another Flux tutorial. My name is Zach Peterson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set a custom board shape when you start a new project in Flux. Now, Flux is very nice because it has a lot of templates built into it. Of course, you can access those from the top search bar when you're in your profile, and you could reuse an existing board shape. However, there are of course times when you wanna create a custom board shape. I'm gonna show you how to do that, and I'm also gonna show you some best practices for using mounting holes and setting the origin around your board shape. So make sure to hop into Flux and follow along. Let's get started. So to get started with a custom board shape, we of course need to start with a new project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a new project from this Nucleo 32 template that I have in my profile. So to do that, I just go to the top menu, new project from template. I can just select this template or I can do it from my profile and it's gonna create my new project. Now in this new project, when it first comes up, one of the first things that you typically want to do when you get into the PCB layout is to set a board shape. So to do this in Flux, you're not actually drawing it out by hand. What you're doing is you are using this objects list, and in this case, we're using the layout, and then we're going to assign some design rules to it. And then when we assign those design rules, those design rules are going to set the board size and shape for us. So just to start, when we first jump into this layout, um, the board size is set based on the value that was in the Nucleo 32 template that I had in my profile. So you can see right here in the object specific rules that it has a 20 millimeter by 40 millimeter board size. So that's based on the template. If you were to jump into a brand new project, you would see a much larger board, but it's gonna be a default size. So of course, by default, it's either gonna be square or rectangle, if I wanted to, I could then, let's say, just change this to, let's say, 30 millimeters. And so if I do that, you can see it changes it to 30 millimeter square. So if you just have one dimension here, it's gonna use it for both X and Y. Now you'll notice here that it's measuring with respect to the origin placed right at the center of the board. If I want it to have different uh, sizes in two dimensions, I would then just add my other dimension here. So 30 millimeters, by 50 millimeters, you see it's a little bit larger. So that's how we change the size in terms of a square or rectangular shape. But how do we add some features to this board shape? So to do that, we need to add some other design rules here. And that's one of the cool things about Flux is you use design rules to set things like board shape, pad size, things like this assigned to different objects in the PCB layout. So here what I'm going to do is I want to, let's say, add a circular curve onto one edge of my board. Well, all I need to do is look for corner radius. So if I want to add a curved profile to my board, what I can use is the corner radius design rule. So if I just click on this, you'll see that this particular version of the corner radius design rule is going to apply to all four corners. So if I just add this in, hit done, and then let's say set this to two millimeters, you can see that it immediately adds in this curved shape right here along the board edge. And it did it on all four board edges. So I could have then, let's say, change this to two millimeters and uh, let's say five millimeters. So if I were to do this, you see that it changed these two edges to the five millimeter corner radius. So on this corner radius, it's slightly larger. Now we could actually enforce a corner radius all the way around the edge of this board that's much larger. And so let's say we wanted to have a circular profile that spans from the center point here on the Y axis and matches down here on the left side of the board. So if we wanted to set that kind of corner radius, we would use, in this case, 15 millimeters. So just as an example, if I put in 15 millimeters for the corner radius, you see that it's then applied to all four corners, and then it creates a circular profile here and a matching quarter circular profile here. So from here, this uh, horizontal line where my mouse is on up, we have a semicircular board. 
Now we could even go a step further and let's say we want to make this just a circular board. Well then in that case we would just have 30 millimeters with a 15 millimeter corner radius on all edges. So these are the two design rules that you would need to create a circular board. Now obviously this circular board is too small to be used for our nucleo, but let's say we instead set this to 50 millimeters and then 25 millimeters for our corner radius. Now we have a much larger uh, circular board that will fit the nucleo uh, form factor. Now it's pretty big, of course, the, the nucleo is gonna uh, sit underneath this when we connect this shield board onto the nucleo, um, but we've assigned the circular board shape that we want. So these are the design rules that you need. Now, instead of just using this corner radius, I could, of course, go back here into add, and if I just type in corner, you see that there's several different options. So here I can assign different ones to top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right, and I can do all of these as different design rules. So let's just say I want just the top left and just the top right. I could add these in, and then let's say set, just for example, 15 millimeters and 15 millimeters. So on adding in those two design rules, let's just check this one. There we go. So on adding in those two design rules, I've, I'm able to just set the corner radius on just these two corners. So the top left and the top right. So make sure that you understand which design rules you need. Think about it. And then you can go through and play with some of those design rules. And that's going to give you these custom shapes uh, that you want for your board shape. And all you'd have to do is just play with some of those corner and then size rules, and then you'll be able to figure out the, the shape that you want for your board. Now, one thing you can do to circumvent all of this manual definition of the corner shape is you can also use the layout shape rule. So if you search for layout, you will find layout shape in the list of rules. Just click add and then done. And then here you have a few different options. So of course, circular is one option. And what it will do is it will use the size rule to then set a circular shape. For rectangle, it's also going to use the size rule. Rectangle looks like the default. And then you can use this flux option, which is where uh, you have a lot of fun and can set this kind of default size using the F in the flux logo. So that's another tool that you have to set some of this automatically. So if you want to do circular, I think this is probably the easiest way. Just go ahead and grab the circular rule. And then you can see here, if I just disable these, I can then go back up to the size rule and say, set this to, let's say 60 millimeters. If I set this to 60 millimeters, you see it updates just using the circular layout shape rule. So far, we've covered how to set a custom board shape using the layout rules. But there's another way that you can do this, and you don't have to do this using the layout rules. What you can actually do is import an asset into a project, and then that asset can be used to set the board shape. So just as an example, I have AutoCAD open, and what I can do is I can create a DXF file from AutoCAD and use that to set the board shape. Now I'm gonna do this in AutoCAD, but you don't have to use AutoCAD. You could use LibreCAD, you could use another free CAD tool. As long as it can export a DXF file, then you can use it. So just as an example, um, I'm just gonna create, let's say a uh, 10 millimeter by 20 millimeter board. Actually, that's gonna be a little, a little small. Let's do this at uh, 30 millimeter by 45 millimeter. So in creating this uh, 30 millimeter by 45 millimeter board shape, um, you'll notice here that I'm putting in these fractional numbers. The reason I'm putting in those decimals like that is because once this is saved and imported into Flux, it's going to interpret the units in meters. So when I put in 0 0.03, it's 0 0.03 meters or 30 millimeters. Now the other thing that you should notice here that I've done is I have set this relative to this origin here. Now that's important because when this board shape imports into Flux, it's going to put this corner at the origin in my PCB layout. 
So here what I can do is I can just go over here and select root, add an asset. If I click add item, it's gonna open up this window. I can just select this. I'm gonna leave this ID as board shape and I'll click done. And then I need to go over to the layout and I need to add in an object specific rule. What I can do is add in the asset rule. And then once I add this, I can select board shape from that drop down list. So now you can see what just happened here. What it did is it set the board shape that matches the outline in my DXF file. And it also set that lower left corner at the origin here in my layout. So now my layout, which was uh, oriented such that the center of U1 was at the origin, I now have the origin at the lower left corner of the board shape. So then what I would need to do is I would want to, of course, take, let's say, U1, if I go to the, if I go to the layout and then select U1, I would wanna make sure that I have the, uh, uh, position uh, design rule set such that this is going to be located here in the board shape. So one option here is, of course, to uh, you know move this manually. I could also just type it in. So for example, I could just type in, uh, let's say, uh, 7.5 millimeters and 15 millimeters, and then. So I correct that error, you can see it started to move it up. So now it's set my uh, center point here for U1 at 7.5 millimeters and 15 millimeters. So you can see it's about halfway up the board shape. So you can set that position manually. The other thing that I could have done in my DXF editor is of course I could take this shape and then move it down such that the origin is at the center of this shape. So that's another option. And if I were to do that and then re-import this board shape, it's actually gonna set the center of that board shape at the origin here in the PCB layout. So there's a number of different ways to do it. Now, I think what's tempting to do is when you're in AutoCAD or LibreCAD or another uh, CAD tool is to start using polylines to then draw out uh, this board shape. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that if you go into the documentation, you'll notice here in this line right here that if you want to use a DXF file, it can only contain these objects. It cannot contain any polylines. So do not use your DXF files with polylines. They will not be usable as the board shape. The other thing you can do is, of course, use an SVG file. And there's actually another uh, article here in the documentation that shows a tutorial of how to define the board shape using an SVG file. So if you just scroll down here, you'll see the code for an SVG file. You could actually use this to define the board shape in your project. So free SVG editors, um, Inkscape is a good one. You can see there's a link right here. And if you search online, you'll find some other editors as well so that you can create SVG files for the board outline. Personally, I prefer DXF because, I mean, of course, I have to use AutoCAD for work, so I have access to it. Um, I think most engineers are probably gonna be familiar with a CAD tool like LibreCAD or AutoCAD, so they're probably a bit more familiar with DXF files. So I prefer DXF personally, but of course, feel free to use SVG if you want. So the final point here relates to where this origin is set in the CAD document versus in the PCB layout and where it is set relative to other objects in your design. Now, you know, having the origin at the lower left portion of the board, I think is a natural choice. It then allows you to set an XY uh, axis that very nicely lines up with the edge of the board. Now, of course, your board may not have a rectangular profile. It could have the curved profile like we had before. So then in that case, you can't set the origin at a corner like a lower left corner because there is no lower left corner. So you would have to set some, some uh, other portion of the board um, as the origin. So for this reason, we sometimes set the origin as a mounting hole in the design rather than using 
uh, one of the corners of the board. And in fact, if you look in the IPC standards, IPC standards state that the lower left mounting hole is actually where the origin should be placed. Now there's nothing wrong with having the origin at the lower left corner or if you remember in the default layout that the uh, origin was actually set at the center of the board. Inside of a CAD tool that's totally fine and I think at the center of the board is a logical place. So this is an issue that relates to mounting holes and we're actually going to discuss it more in an upcoming video where I'll talk about how to design boards that use mounting holes, how to work with ground on mounting holes, and how to work with mounting holes with regards to the origin setting in your project. Now, the last point I want to bring up here is uh, the location of the origin in this tool. Now, this whole time we've been talking about the board size and the board shape and the location of mounting holes and things like this, you should notice that the board origin is always set at the center of the board. Now, that is certainly convenient. However, I think it's important to note that fabricators will often shift the origin of your board so that it references one of two places. Um, first, the most common is right here, H1. So this is the very center of this mounting hole. So this is the most common point where you would reference the origin for this board. If this hole were not here in this PCB layout, then it would be this point here, which is the lower left corner of the board edge. So those are the two locations that are most common for referencing the origin of a PCB layout. And that will be done in CAM software. Now, I think it's in your benefit to actually shift the origin to one of these two points. So in order to shift the origin of the layout while maintaining the board shape, what we actually need to do is select the layout and then we can add in the position rule. And so with the position rule, we can then move the PCB layout in X and Y such that the origin, which is these two blue lines here running horizontally and vertically, now coincides with one of these standard locations that is used by professional uh, CAD tools as well as manufacturers. So doing that is really simple. I'm just gonna click done. Now, if we look at the position of this hole, we just scroll down here, we can see that it's at negative 20 millimeters and negative 20 millimeters. So what that means is that we wanna shift the PCB up 20 millimeters and over 20 millimeters in order to get the center of this hole to sit at the origin in this coordinate system. So to do that, I just go back here for my position rule, 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters. And then when I do that, you can see that it just grabbed everything and moved it up. And now the origin lines up perfectly with this mounting hole. Now, of course, it requires that the footprint for this mounting hole be created properly. In this case, it was. This mounting hole has the center of its footprint corresponding with the exact center of this mounting hole. So we can do that and of course do that position shift and then you'll see it uh, moves it perfectly over to that new position so that the origin coincides with this position in the mounting hole. We could also do the exact same thing to then set the origin here to the lower left corner. If I was gonna do that, instead of using uh, a 20 millimeter shift, I would do 25 millimeters in X and then 25 millimeters in Y and now you can see here the origin corresponds to the lower left corner. So a lot of other CAD tools will set the origin by default to this point right here, which is the lower left corner. And they normally do that because of course this mounting hole is not here yet when you're creating a new PCB layout. So of course, since the mounting hole is not there, the CAD tool doesn't know where to put the origin. So they just put it in the lower left corner of the board. So that's how you shift the position of the board so that you get the origin to the location that you want it. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I hope this shows you how easy it is to set a custom board shape and set a custom board position with respect to the board shape or mounting holes in your PCB layout. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to see all of our tutorials as they come out. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.